Hey, what do you know about graphing rational functions? I know all about that. I can graph rational functions. Can you? <laughs> you totally right. Our first task was to graph a rational function that has a vertical asymptote and has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. We chose y equals three over x minus two. Chris is gonna show you what this graph looks like. Hi, this is what f of x equals three over x minus two looks like. So this is the graph and in order to find the vertical asymptote, what you're gonna wanna do is try and solve for the denominator, this right here. So you have x minus two, and you gotta ask yourself, dear x minus two, when do you equal zero? So you're gonna wanna add two to each side, and you'll end up getting x equals two. So that's where your vertical asymptote is. So you draw in your vertical asymptote, and a vertical asymptote means that the, the line never uh, crosses that zone. That's swell. Sorry, I didn't see you come in. I was just sitting here practicing graphing horizontal asymptotes. Totes. So I guess since you're here, I could teach you how to graph them. First, you're going to want to compare the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Look, I already have one set up. Okay, so you have three x to the zero. That makes sense, right? So it's pretty much just three. The x to the zero is just there to help you. And then you have x to the first, which is just x, but the one is just there to try and help you, minus two. So in order to find the horizontal asymptote, you're going to want to compare these. Now, since that, we're going to call 0n and 1m. Since that n is less than m, then your horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. If n, say, was equal to m, then your horizontal asymptote would be at a n over a m. If n was greater than m, then your horizontal asymptote would not be real, because there is none. <laughs> That's a good one. So here's our graph, and our horizontal asymptote is right here. Next week on the show, we'll be showing you how to graph points. Hi! Today I'm going to teach you how to pick a point and graph it. Okay, so it's pretty simple really. What we did was, we picked a point on the x-axis, 3, and plugged it in for x up here. Pretty simple. The number you get is your y value. So we got 3, so we put a dot where 3 and 3, where they met, right there. We did this again at 5. We picked 5 for x plugged it in, and for y, we got 1. Do the same thing down here, just with different numbers. Just make sure you don't pick a number that's on one of your asymptotes. Hi, I saw you there. You can't hide from me. Today I'm going to teach you how to find a slant asymptote. Here's our equation. x squared minus x plus 1 over x minus 1. This is pretty easy, actually. All you have to do is divide the numerator by the denominator. So I already have it partially set up. So what you do is you ask yourself, x minus 1, how many times do you go into x squared minus x? And you know, I thought about it, and it's x times. So you get x times x, which is x squared, and negative 1 times x, which is Negative x, and this is subtraction. Oh, subtraction. Let's move to a plus sign. Okay, so you do this and you say x squared minus x squared is zero. Negative x plus x is zero. You're done. 
your slant asymptote is going to be at y equals x. The great thing about slant asymptotes is you don't have to worry about the remainder. Hello. Now, this is another problem. It's f of x or y equals x squared minus 9 all over x. Okay. Now first, we wanted to find the vertical asymptotes. So to do that, we had to figure out what values for the denominator made it 0. And since the denominator is x, the only value that would make it 0 is 0. So right along the y-axis is our vertical asymptote. Okay. So now what we wanted to do was to find the x-intercepts. Now this particular problem has two x-intercepts. These are at both 3 and negative 3. How do we figure that out? We had to figure out what made the numerator value equal 0. So what made x squared minus 9 equal 0? And now the values for that would be 3 and negative 3. That's because when you square something, it's always going to be positive. So we needed what minus 9 equals 0? And that was 9. And 3 and negative 3 squared both equal 9. So those are our two x-intercepts. OK, now for our next problem, it is y equals x squared over x squared minus 4. Now, this problem has two vertical asymptotes and a horizontal asymptote that is not on the x-axis. So how you find vertical asymptote is you figure out what makes the denominator zero. We need to figure out what minus four equals zero. That is four. So what squared equals four? That would be both values of two and negative two, meaning that there is a vertical asymptote at both two and negative two. Now, to find the horizontal asymptote, you take the degrees of the numerator and the denominator and compare them to each other. They're both two in this particular instance. Which means you take the first coefficient over the denominator's coefficient, which is 1 over 1. Now, that means that you have a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals 1. Cool. We can do math in the hallway. We can do math in the hallway. We can do math in the computer lab. We can do math in the computer lab. Look at all the computers in the lab. Oh, okay. Excellent. We can do math where all the teachers park. We can do math where all the freaking teachers park. Look at all the cars out in the parking lot for teachers. We can do math while going up the stairs. We can do math on the stairwell. One step plus two step equals three steps. Dang it, we can't do math in the basement. We can't do math in the dungeon. Because it's locked and we don't got the key. We can do math in the elevator. We can do math in the elevator. Going down to the basement, tator. We can do math behind the doors.